Hello and welcome back. In this slice of physics, we are going to review the concepts of distance that you're quite familiar with and displacement, which may be somewhat new. Distance, as you know, is a scalar. It's measured in units of length and it does depend on the path of travel between the starting and ending positions. Displacement, in contrast, is a vector. So it has not only magnitude, but also direction. The other thing that's different about displacement is that it does not depend on the path of travel. It only cares about where you started and where you ended, and it's a straight line connection between the starting and the ending points that forms a displacement vector. Let's begin by quickly reviewing the familiar concept of distance. If I asked you how much you traveled to get from home to school this morning, your answer of course will depend on where you live. If you live on campus, you might say something like five blocks to go from your dorm or apartment to class. And if you lived in the suburbs, you might say that you traveled 18 miles to get to school today. So distance as a scalar only has magnitude. But even magnitude has two components. It's got a number, like 5 or 18, but these numbers are meaningless without a unit. So the second component they have is a unit, which can be something like miles or meters or kilometers, or even informal units like city blocks, like we have in this case. Now let's take a little more advanced example that illustrates the fact that distance does care about the path of travel and not just the starting and ending positions. So first, here's a grid that we have set up to describe our journey from our starting position to our ending position. Let's say our origin is defined to be here, and all positions are defined with respect to the origin. And let's further say that when I move from the origin towards the right, I'm going towards the east. When I move up, I'm going towards the north. When I move left, I'm going towards the west. And when I move down, I'm going south. That's our coordinate axis. And let's also say that the grid that we have set up, each box here or each tick mark is one mile long. Okay, so now we move from this position here called A, our initial position, to this position here called B, which is our final position. However, we don't go from A to B in a straight line. We first start going north from A and we go up two miles, at which point we turn right and go four miles, one, two, three, four miles, straight towards the east. And once we get to that point, we turn right again and go two miles south to get to B. So here's our journey from A to B. This is how we travel. Now, if I asked you what distance you have traveled in this journey, all you got to do is add up the distance traveled for each segment. So the total distance of this journey is simply two miles plus four miles plus two miles for the three segments that we showed here, which totals up to a total distance of eight miles. There we are. Distance as a scalar has just magnitude which, as we discussed, has two components, the number and the units. Now, displacement is different from distance in two key respects. The first thing is that it is a vector. And as a vector, it has magnitude and direction. So we'll see how that plays into effect. And the second thing we mentioned before is that it does not care about the path of travel. So it's independent of travel path. Displacement is simply a straight line connection from the starting point to the ending point. So in our case, from A to B, if I draw a straight line and show it with an arrow because it's a vector, that gives me a sense of direction of travel. So here's our displacement, simply a straight line connection between A and B. Mathematically, displacement is written as a change in position, delta x. Delta in physics means change. x in this case we're using as a substitute for position. 
So delta x is change in position, which is what displacement is. And it's defined as the final position minus the initial position. Note that the final and initial position are also vectors as, as identified by the arrow on top of them. So what are they? So my final position in this case is B, and its position with respect to the origin is that it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 miles east. And A is simply 1 mile east of the origin. So in our case, the displacement is XB, which is our final, minus XA. And let's just carry all these vector symbols to remind ourselves that we are working with a vector now. And XB, or the position of B, is 5 miles east. And from that we subtract 1 mile east, which is the position of A. And that gives us a displacement of 4 miles east. So now I've got two components of this answer. We got the magnitude as before, which in turn has a number and a unit. And then we got direction. In this case, the direction is simply due east. So even though the distance I traveled is 8 miles, 2 plus 4 plus 2, the displacement I have, delta x equals 4 miles east. When I go from a position that's 1 mile east to 5 miles east, and I don't care about the path of travel and just simply connect them with a straight line, I would get the answer of displacement as 4 miles east. So in this slice of physics, we reviewed the familiar concept of distance, which is a scalar and measured in units of length. And it does care about the path of travel. And we saw how different that was from a related concept of displacement, which is a vector, so it has magnitude and direction, and it is independent of the path of travel, so it only depends on the starting and ending position and not how you got from A to B.